Father God, I want to thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity we have to, to be here to uh, honor you with our music, to honor you with our hearts that are submitted to you. And Father, now to uh, listen to your word and have your spirit teach us. We, uh, we want everything to be to your purpose today. In Jesus' name, amen. Family sat down to have Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, from the oldest to the youngest, they walked, worked around the table to talk about the things they were grateful for, and came to the five-year-old, and he focused in on the turkey. And uh, he started out by say, thanking the turkey for being so delicious, even though I haven't tasted you, I know you're going to be delicious. And he thanked the farmer for making the food and making the turkey fat. And he thanked the, the, the guy who took the turkey to the store. And he thanked the people who put it on the shelf. And he went on and on about the turkey and everybody who had a part in it. Alma traced it from the beginning of the egg all the way to the table. And he got done with it. And, he's, and uh, he finished up. He said, have I forgotten anybody? And his two-year-old brother sitting next to him, who was next, said, uh, what about God? Oh, I was getting to him. <laughs> Thanksgiving season. We love Thanksgiving. I, and there's lots of reasons why we love Thanksgiving, but I want us not to forget God. Uh, at the heart of it all, Thanksgiving season is about putting God at the center so the next two Sundays, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving. We're going to turn our attention. We're going to stay in the same passage for two weeks. We're going to look at 1 Chronicles 16, verses 7 through 36. And in the next two weeks, we're going to talk about two questions. Today, we're going to talk about why give thanks. And we could probably answer a lot of questions. Why should we give thanks? And then next Sunday, we are going to tackle the topic of how do we give thanks? Because David has some very pointed things, very powerful things to say in this text. On the 23rd, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, because we've built up to that, the 23rd, we are going to do a Thanksgiving Sunday. And one of the reasons you'd be thankful that day, we aren't going to have a sermon. <laughs> but you, we're, we're going to invite you to be a, a very crucial part of that. We're going to invite you to come prepared to share thanks. To We're going to have some people, ask some people to come and share some testimonies about what God is doing in their life. We're going to do a lot of singing, just celebrating. And for those of you who don't want to get up in front of anybody or anybody who would like to participate, we're going to offer you the opportunity to, after services the next two Sundays to uh, video just some reasons why you're thankful. And then we will play that on the 23rd. We'll kind of blend that into the service. Uh, so the 23rd is just going to be, let's just call it a party. Yes. It's going to be a party. And we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, but right now, let's, let's turn to 1 Corinthians, or 1 Chronicles, I'm sorry, 16. Just sign up to some, some background to, to what we're looking at. Uh, it is a day of celebration for Israel. Uh, if you go back a couple chapters, they kind of map out the story. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant has been away from Jerusalem for a while. Uh, if you remember, uh, David made an effort to bring it back to Jerusalem, and they were coming. And, and if you remember the story, if you don't know the story, go back and read the first couple, or couple chapters ahead. And you'll remember how they had it on a cart and it was making its way up to Jerusalem. And the, the ox stumbled and the Ark looked like it was going to tip over. And a guy reached out and, and steadied it, and God struck him dead. And David was ticked at God because he was doing the right thing, and the guy was just trying to help. But it all boiled down to the fact that David had abandoned and forgotten how God had told them to transport the ark. But he left it at the guy's farm. He said, I don't want anything to do with this. So he left it there. For a while, and then 16th chapter, 15th and 16th chapters, they decide, well, let's bring it to Jerusalem. Let's carry it the right way. 
And they bring the ark back to Jerusalem. And it's there that, that we read the story about the music and the people singing and dancing and people and David getting down to his skivvies and, and dancing in the streets in front of the maidens and his wife resenting him in her heart. And, and they come in and they have this celebration and David gives the... the gives Asaph, who was the worship leader, he was the Joel of the day, he gives them this song. And it's a compilation. You can find portions of this in, in the book of Psalms. But I want to just read it. Because this, he, this is what he calls them to do. The, that day David first committed to Asaph and his associates this psalm of thanks to, be, to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on His name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done. His miracles and the judgments he pronounced. O descendants of Israel, his servant. O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The word he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. When they were but few in number, few indeed, and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no man to oppress them, for their sake he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and joy in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations, ascribe the, to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then the trees of the forest will sing. They will sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Cry out, save us, O God, our Savior. Gather us and deliver us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name, that we may glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord the God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen. Amen, and praise the Lord. Maybe we could just stop. Day of Thanksgiving. Why should we give thanks? I think there's four reasons that I, that I want to just grab out of this rather briefly. I, we'll see how briefly my voice will... Number one, I, I want us to, to see that we are to give thanks to God, to glorify God. Yeah. I read an article this week, and one guy said, what does it mean to glorify God? What, what does that mean? He says, we throw it around like popcorn. I mean, in, in Christian, in the church, we say, glory to God. We glorify God. But what exactly does that mean? To, does that mean that God is some kind of arrogant, egotistical being up there that needs us to, to say good things about him, to make him feel good about himself? What does it mean to glorify God? Well, I think, number one, need, we need to understand what it doesn't mean. It, it doesn't, oops, I got to, this went backwards on me. It's not something he doesn't already possess. We're not, we're not giving him something. When he says ascribe to the Lord, he's not asking us to give him something that he doesn't already have. He is a being who is clothed in glory and strength and majesty. He is surrounded in holiness. 
So we're, there's nothing we can add to him or to make him any more than he is. And we can never take anything away from him to make him less than he is. So we're not talking about something he doesn't have. We are talking about enhancing his reputation. How many, let me give you a weak illustration. How many of you know the name Dr. J? Not very many hands. Does Julius Irving sound more familiar? For those of you who don't know who Dr. J is, let, let me just tell you, he is probably one of the, the best basketball players to ever walk the face of this earth. Now, I know you got Michael Jordan. I know you got those names in your mind. But Dr. J could do things with a basketball no man has... I've ever seen any man do. He had hands the size of plates. And he could stand behind the backboard and reach up and dunk the basketball. He was a man. And am I making him great by talking about him? I'm not. His greatness is inherent. What am I doing by talking about him? Helping those who don't know about him understand him. That's why we give thanks to God. It's to enhance his reputation. There are a lot of people who don't know about God and don't understand the breadth and size of God. And when we stand up and give thanks, we are helping them to see him in a way they've never seen him before. I don't give him any glory. He has that. I just give him the credit that his, is his due. So that, that's the first reason that I want us to see that we, that we, we give thanks is glorify God. And I'll never get used to this. <laughs> Second of all, to, in, to edify others. I was watching TV the other day and I saw a commercial. Can't even remember the product. But it was a marathon. A guy was running through a marathon. And there was a crowd. And, and there was one guy that appeared several times in the crowd holding up a sign. Said, you got this. And they went on. And, and a little ways further, here's the guy in the crowd. You got this. Come to the finish line. And here he is standing at the finish line as this person crosses the line. You got this. You know... As I think about the Christian life, not every one of us are in the same place. Some of us are in good places right now. Life is going smooth. We don't have health issues. We don't have financial issues. We don't have relation issues. Things are good. But that's not true for everybody here. Is it? Some of us are going through some financial woes. Some of us are dealing with health issues. Some of us are dealing with family problems. Some of us are, are struggling and we're, and we're trying to hold on one more moment. We're trying to, to cling to that. And, and what we need is somebody to come along and give us some encouragement and reason to hold on. Why do we give thanks? To help that individual who's just clinging to the thread to say, yeah, God is there. God is still there. Oops. If you go down to verses 12 through 13, look, look at what he has to say. He says, remember the wonders he's done. His miracles and the judgments he pronounced. O descendants of Israel, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. And then 19 through 22, he says, when they were few, but few in number, few indeed, and strangers, and that they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another, he allowed no man to oppress them for their sake. He rebuked kings, do not touch my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. What's the value of remembering what God has done? It's easy to lose sight, isn't it? Isn't it easy to forget the good things when the bad things come along? And in the midst of that, to have people who are struggling, trying to figure out how can I keep going one more day, 
to have people come along and say, I want to thank God for what he has done and what he is doing in my life helps me. When I think about edifying, it strengthens me and adds the ability for me to take that next step. Our giving thanks can make the difference in somebody's life. A brother or sister who needs some encouragement to come alongside them. So we give thanks to edify, to, to help one another. We also give thanks to encourage others to trust God. This is the evangelistic aspect of David's psalm. Why did God choose Israel? Anybody remember? To be an island of holiness in the midst of a, of a, of a pagan world where where they were the only ones that received God's blessings and they could just cut everybody else off? Is that why he chose Israel? Why did he choose them? To be a testimony and a witness to the world about what, who he is and what he can do for a people he wants to bless. That there was an evangelistic aspect to the nation of Israel. That they were to, to help others discover who God is and that they might worship and honor him. Listen to what he has to say here to them. He says, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the who? The nations. What he has done. Look at verse 23. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He should be feared above all gods. For all the gods and the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Do you not catch on to the evangelistic thrust there? Give thanks to God so that those who are worshiping the idols, the other gods, that, that they might see that those idols are, I like why one, he says, those gods are nothings. That they would see what they worship has nothing to offer them compared to what I have to offer. And they would be turned and begin trusting in me. Now here's the $64,000 question for us this morning. What is our purpose in Willamina, Oregon? Pardon? To seek and to save the lost, to make disciples, to glorify God and to help others who are not trusting God now to begin trusting him. To proclaim day after day the salvation of God. But that includes not only the story of Jesus. Because sometimes that proclaiming the salvation begins with telling the story about what God is doing in my life. And I can begin telling people, this is what God has done. This is why I love God. And then they begin to look at their life and say, you know, that person has something maybe I need to know about. So we give thanks as an essential part of evangelism, reaching our community. Tell people. Make it known to the nations. Make it known to Willamina what God is doing. It's not just for Sunday morning. Be bold. Go to work tomorrow and say, let me tell you what God has done for me. When you go play or when you go bowling, or when you go hunting, or when you, whatever you're doing, if you're with someone, take the opportunity to say, this is what God has done. We encourage others to begin trusting God by giving thanks. Here's the one I really like. Oops, I got all that. We celebrate God's wonders and mercy. I want to ask you, when you hear the word celebrate, what comes to mind? A birthday party. Hmm? Happy. Lots of images. Birthday party is a great one. 
Uh, those of you who like football, what happens when your team scores a touchdown? Ooh. Yeah, and the guy gets in the end zone and he does this all the, you know, all that stuff. That's a celebration. What's? Did anybody see the Oregon Duck game yesterday? What a lame thing. The, the guy had a 79-yard touchdown, and he dropped the ball on the one-yard line. And he was in the end zone doing this. And the Oregon guy picked up the ball and ran 100 yards for a touchdown. Yeah. you got to be sure you've got something to celebrate before you start celebrating. I'm not saying the Oregon day game was lame. I just said that play was lame. I'd never seen that before. But celebrate. When I think of the word celebrate, I think of one word. Parte. Party. You know the word he uses? He says give glory or glory in his name. That's what he says. The word glory is halal. And if you recognize halal, you will recognize it. It is the root of hallelujah. And it means to shout or to boast, to make a show, or to jubilate. How long has it been since your Thanksgiving represented that? There are some great celebrations in Scripture, folks. David, bringing the ark. I can't dance. It would be humiliating for me to dance. But David didn't care. He was dancing in the streets. I don't know. Maybe Sunday morning we need to have some dancers. No, let's not. I, maybe we need to do it. You, you go to Matthew and you find Jesus coming into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And you have the crowds with their, they're taking their coats off and throwing it on the ground and throwing palm fronds in front of him. And they are saying, Hallelujah. You know what that means? Halle, it means glory, and Yah is God. So praise God. How long has it been since you shouted hallelujah? Well, that's weak. <laughs> the celebration. You go to Revelation 19, you know what you're going to be doing in heaven? You're going to be partying. You read Revelation 19 and you hear the word over and over again. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. I know. That's, it's a celebration. If you don't like partying, don't go to heaven. <laughs> How long has it been? We call this 1045 our worship celebration. How long has it been since we've come and really celebrated God's wonders and mercies? Thanksgiving ought to be a time to party. That's, that's my favorite one of the four. You might have got that. You know how hard it was for me not to sing this morning? But I needed not to so I could talk. Why do we give thanks? To give glory to God? To edify one another? To help others come to trust in God and to them to celebrate? Just to celebrate who God is and what he's doing in our lives. In, on our living room wall, Dolores has stenciled three words. Those of you who have been here know. Those of you who have been here always ask. <laughs> Eucharisteo is one of them. She brought it home. She brought them home from Women of Faith last year. And she painted them on the walls. Her daughter said she would and she did. <laughs> Eucharisteo simply means to give thanks or to be grateful. It's not an act but an attitude. And that's what God has in mind for us to be as believers. To live 
with an attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving. But I don't know about you, but sometimes that's hard to maintain. Sometimes it's hard in the midst of the struggle to do what Paul says, give thanks in all things. And so my challenge in this text for me, and I think the challenge for us in this text, is to be willing for him to begin developing in us an attitude of thanksgiving, an attitude of gratitude to lift up his name and help others know that we serve a great God. So this, I've given you four reasons to go out and give thanks this week. Next week we're going to talk about how to do that. We're going to talk about how, what that looks like visibly and physically. But be grateful. Begin thinking about the 23rd, about that celebration. You're gonna, what are you going to bring to the table on that day? And who are you going to bring that day to enjoy that celebration? Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we could just say those two words and it would be just enough of a prayer. Lord, you are the source of every good thing. You are the source. You are the one who dwells in absolute perfect purity and majesty and glory. Lord, there's no words that we could ever give that would be adequate. But Lord, our world needs to hear about you, how great you are. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be grateful people and be vocal and verbal about it and to celebrate. Thank you. Praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. In the morning.